Alright, enough years ago, okay? I've done so much years ago in the past week, it's not even funny. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You can never get enough for years ago, but a couple of you guys wanted me to do some years ago, so we're gonna do that. And, of course, I'm not the kind of guy who can focus on a single thing forever, so, you know, we gotta diversify a little bit, come on. Hello everybody, I'm Karara, and today we're going to be speedrunning the Yusubo 2011 opening exam, and honestly, I have no idea how speedruns will work, because, like, the time limit on Yusubo is pretty short, so you're anyways usually speedrunning it, but we'll see how fast we can go. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because, like, I've been doing a lot of Yusubo, and a couple of you guys asked me to do some more Yusubo videos, so why not? If you guys want more of whatever you guys want, just let me know in the comments, and I read all of them, so, like, make sure to tell me, and I'll be sure to do it. So anyways, with no further ado, let us jump into the epic run-through. Come on. We got this. Soft watch. Ready, set, go. Okay, so all the processes, okay, involves hydrogen bonding. Okay, DNA replication does come between strands. Formation of ice crystal, yes. Binding event, yes. Deep. What? All of the above, right? What? Yeah, okay, E. Two. Of the cellular, which has the lowest pH? So, like, mitochondrial matrix probably has pretty so basically what the mitochondria does is pump out protons into the matrix and then it comes back in so basically the matrix should have the highest pH or I mean lowest pH because it has the most hydrogen ions would a lysosome have low pH though? it's either lysosome or mitochondrial matrix I don't want to overthink it I'm pretty sure it should be just C right yeah I'm just gonna go with C because like I'm pretty sure lysosomes need really low pH for their digestive enzymes to work Okay, lipids are made up of polymers of fatty acids. Kind? No? Okay, lipids are hydrophobic. Lipids are made up of hydrogen Yeah, so three is not true because when you have, or no, no. Three is true because when you have saturated fats, it's like butter and stuff, and those are all solid at room temperature. So two and three are for sure true. Let's see. Um, so it's either C or E, but I'm pretty sure it has fatty acids, does it? Oh, yeah, that counts as a polymer, so yeah, it's just going to be all 3A, I mean E, because it's like glycerol and then three fatty acids off of it, that counts as a polymer. Okay, spectrophotometer is used to analyze the concentration of protein DNA and many other chemical compounds, zooming input light intensity at a particular wavelength, lambda is I, whatever, and intensity light is I1, oh, I0, I1, if the concentration doubles, what is the following statement? Okay, so the percent transmission will be twice as much no so basically absorbance is what changes right so absorbance of second yes okay so it's basically just going to be b okay what is the concentration of hydrogen ions at ph 5.7 so basically you just remember your formula 10 to the negative 5.7 is just going to be like it's approximately 10 to the negative 6 except a little bit more so the only one that's a little bit more than 10 to the negative 6 is 2 times 10 to the negative 6 so b six Amino acids are and nucleotides are formed from for complex polymers. So okay, true. Both contain peptide bonds. No, so that's not true. Um, both contain nitrogen, which is true. Both may form helical structures. Yes. D nucleotides and amino acids are branched polymers. Okay, nucleotides do not form branches. They're not D. And both okay, proteins do not contain phosphate groups. So B and C is our answer. Seven. A variety of different techniques are used to separate, analyze, and purify different chemical compounds. Select all the following techniques that can be used to estimate the molecular weight of a protein. So, all the following that could be... Okay, I honestly have no idea. I don't know any of this stuff. So, it's probably not going to be D because you're not exchanging any ions. The proteins don't have, like, necessarily a charge. I'm not sure. Okay, so I know <laughs> isoelectric has something to do with proteins, and I know... Electrophoresis. That's so vague though. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with A and C, but don't know how to do that one at all. Okay, which of the following does not apply to the chloroplast? Okay, so it does contain, yes, that's true. Uh, contains an internal membrane, okay, that's true. Bound by two membranes, okay, it, it, it is not folded into cristae because the way it gets surface area is by having the thylakoid, so it's C. Nine. Well, what does it look? Okay, wait, what? No, what? Oh, maybe it is? Bruh, it is. Okay, so D. No, 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 no. That's why you read all the options, boys. Okay. Because, I guess... Well, I guess it just doesn't use the Christe. Yeah, I don't know about the Christe thing, then. I thought the Christe was only a mitochondria thing, but this is for sure not right. It's for sure bound by 
two membranes. Okay. Many members, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so feedback inhibition of this pathway may involve the last one going to the first one somehow. So, the product of interacting with and inhibiting E1, yes. F inhibiting the product. Part what? Product B interacting with. No. Yeah, it should just be A. So basically, the definition is the product interferes with the process that creates it. So I don't see how you could inhibit a product, so I guess that's that. Okay, in the example above, uh, assume that D is an allosteric inhibitor of enzyme E2. Wait, oh, we gotta go up. So it goes here, it goes there. Allosteric, so it would not compete. Allosteric means it binds to a separate area. Compete with, no, bind direct, no. Yeah, so it should be D. Yeah, okay, so it's D. 11. A plant cell with a solute potential of negative 0.8 milli megapascals maintains a constant volume when bathed in a solution that has a solute potential of negative 0.25 and is in an open container. Oh no, I hate this so much. I forgot how to do this. So I'm pretty sure it's solute potential plus pressure potential is equal to your water potential. But its pressure potential is zero on the outside. So basically your water potential is just gonna be the difference of the two. So the only one that could possibly be right is A, so that's gonna be E, no, what, no, pressure potential? Oh, pressure, yeah, so pressure potential is gonna be plus, yeah, okay, that makes sense, so A makes sense, nice. So the water potential has to be negative 0.25, so that makes sense. Okay, 12, identify, okay. So basically, parenchyma has the smallest cell walls and it's really flexible and stuff. Colenchyma is slightly more, and then sclerenchyma is like really cell wally. That's a new word. That's a cool word. That's right. You guys better use cell wally in your next bio exam, okay? So it should be parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma. So D. Thirteen. Some of the okay are used by the plant, so you need to use it for respiration, right? So it should just be B. But let's see. No, not A. No, I'm assuming it's just B, right? Yeah, probably B. 13B, 14. We're zooming through this, are we? I don't know if we're zooming through it. How many root meristems do you estimate are on the plant? Root meristems. So there should be one at each tip of the root. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, I can't count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So C. That's kind of troll, not gonna lie. 15. Among flowering plants, the details of the morphology of the flower were considered the most important characteristics to determine relatedness because A. Flowers, okay, sure, that's probably why, honestly. Could be, sure. Flower parts were easy, okay. Is it not literally any of them? Okay, D is not true. Flower size was not altered, no, okay. C, it's probably C, right? Yeah, it's honestly probably C. It's either C or A, but I think C. 16. Cross section here. How do you know what the cross section is? Like it literally could be anything. Literally I have no idea so I'm just not gonna, I'm just gonna put A for no reason. 17. No need to waste time on things we have no idea on. Okay. Bacteria including cyanobacteria include, okay, so resemble immediately, okay, so the common ancestor of plants and animals could synthesize. So A, both amylopectin and glycogen, which couldn't make sense, that could make sense. Well basically like bacteria are older than plants and animals, right? Like, basically there was a big boy bacteria, and then from, well technically it was archaea, but like, it split into stuff, right? So if plants and animals came from this bacteria, the bacteria must have had both glycogen and amylopectin, otherwise how would it, well it might not have amylopectin, it might just have glycogen and it evolved separately in plants. So it's not A then, I, I think it should be D because we know it has glycogen because this bacteria also has glycogen, right? But this, uh, this thing probably, but animals for sure do not have amylopectin, so D probably makes sense. Okay, we're going with D. 18. Suppose you're walking through a deciduous forest, you notice a dead tree that has been cut down and cut into logs that are tagged and labeled for removal from the forest three years prior. You end up, okay, so it's heavy and, okay, so what is it? Water from the soil? No, because it should be mostly dry material once you. Once it's dead, macronutrients from the cell, micronutrients, invisible gas from the air. I'm pretty sure it's not B or C because it can't take in nutrients once it's dead. So it must be D, right? Because like, what else? <laughs> no, you're not gonna get like, why would prokaryote be? No. So I guess we're just gonna go with D, epic. Dream starvation, steroid hormones, trigger the transcription of dreams, 
genes, not dreams, okay, we don't transcribe gene, dream, dream, dreams, for lipid metabolism in their target cell. This would be an example of controlled by, so basically you're inducing, sure what? So it's probably D, right? So it wants to end your starvation though. I'm pretty sure it's A, right? Because you're starving and then basically in order to stop you from starving, this happens. So it should be A. I'm pretty sure like the C and D don't count as like control mechanism, which is why they won't be the answer, but I'm not sure. 20, on the one fifth, how did I read that as Ani? Okay, one fifth of the cardiac output flows through the kidneys after being filtered by, okay, I know this stuff because I made a video on kidneys that I didn't post ever. Ah, oh, good memories. But don't worry, we know this. All right, so it first goes through the proximal tubule, this boy over here, then it goes down the loop of Henley and back up again. Ah, this is beautiful. Then it goes through the distal tubule, and then it goes to the collecting duct. That is exactly how a kidney looks. Okay, well, let's be even cooler. There's a Bowman's capsule, and inside it is a bunch of spaghetti called the glomerulus, and that's where the blood comes from, or the filtrate, or whatever, yeah, filtrate. So, we first got four, then we got three, then we got one, then we got two, then we got five. Four, three, one, two, five. Epic. We know our kidneys too well. 20E. So I know one. An animal experiences an acid-base imbalance in the arterial blood that results in acidosis to increase pH to where normal, which is the blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay. So basically, your PCO2 causes your pH to drop. So if you want to increase your pH, right, you got to get rid of your CO2. And in order to get rid of your CO2, you got to increase your ventilation so that your PCO2 decreases. So it's just going to be B. So I know two. What are the following statements about skeletal muscle is not correct? The length uh, distance of a single muscle contraction depends, no, because basically it's going to keep pulling the muscle while there is calcium in there, so it's the length of time that the calcium, cal calcium, calcium is there. Muscles with short sarcomeres contract faster than muscles with long sarcomeres? I think, wait, is it literally just A then? It's not true, so I think it would be A, right? Okay, let's see. Okay, C is true. D is also true. E is also true. So, so basically, it's just going to be D3, right? I don't know. I mean, A just seems wrong, so we're going to go with A. 23. The completion of meiosis in males produces four spermatids, each containing... Bruh, is it really just 23? So basically, you start off with 46 pairs of chromosomes because they're all like duplicated and everything. Then you split into 23 pairs of chromosomes. And then again, you split into 23 chromosomes in each cell. So it should be A. What? Oh, it's multiple things. So, A and D. Okay. 24. A rat chewing the insulation of your wiring in your car is... Okay. So it's basically just demyelination of the nervous system. <laughs> what? Okay. Sure. Sure. 25. Which of the following um, statements is incorrect? Cartilage heals slower than skin. It's not because of the deeper tissue. It's because it doesn't have many stem cells in it. Or it doesn't have anything that could divide. So that's not right. The inside, the inside lining of the intestine has... Well, it doesn't have a good blood supply either. That's the other problem. Inside lining of the intestine has... Yeah, what? Cilia? It's called microvilli. Is it, is it trolling? Okay, so I think it's just one and two then. <laughs> okay, A. Trying to troll us with the cilia? No. We know it's microvilli, okay? Microvilli are what increase its surface area. Let me get rid of my beautiful kidney thing. Okay. So, in the absence of active transport, the passive sodium and potassium ion fluxes through the plasma membrane are still coupled. What makes them dependent on each other? So, it's not the pumping ratio because it's not working. Cholesterol? No. Membrane potential? Okay, I'm pretty sure it's membrane potential. Because, like, if you have a lot of anions on the inside of the cell, it attracts positive things from the outside to come inside. So, like, once potassium starts going out of the cell, like, sodium is going to want to come into the cell because it'll be less positive inside the cell. Wait, the last one? Oh, the last one though. Is it D or the last one? Kind of fuzzled. Wait, that's not a troll. What I was explaining could literally be the last one. Yeah, I don't think the membrane potential is what, because the membrane potential depends on the ions. Yeah, okay, so I think it's literally just going to be E. 27. Okay, so signify the total cross-sectional areas. Okay, so it goes from really small cross sectional area, it jumps a ton in the capillaries, and then it goes down. I have no idea why there's like a thing, but I'm pretty sure it goes down like all the way because there's barely any vein, there's barely any artery, so it should just be A. Polarity in the blah 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 is, okay, so it should be bicoid, I'm pretty sure, because I remember this. 
So it's not A, could be B. Yeah, it should be just B because I am pretty sure that is what determines it. So, like, the funny thing, the cool thing that I remember is, like, if you take out the bicoid, or, no, no, if you inject bicoid, you can get two tails, or two heads, I forgot what it was, but that was weird. Imagine a two-headed fly, that's just nasty. Although many fish are exothermic, some fish are endothermic, sure, okay. Which of the following is most likely an endothermic fish? Oh, bro, how am I supposed to know? I'm pretty sure sharks are, and I'm pretty sure salmon might be, so I'll just go with two and three. I have no idea, honestly. But I've heard things about, well, I know sharks are probably going to be warm-blooded, but then salmon, or I mean endothermic, and then salmon are like special, because they're not normal sea fish, so maybe. So, John, 45 years old, learning his first marathon in Denver, Colorado, with a time of 3 hours and 43 minutes, running hard at mile 43. Okay, so his muscles increased his, okay, what the heck? So, his intrapulmonary pressure. Wait, shouldn't it? I'm pretty sure his intrapulmonary pressure must have increased because that means you want to get more air to your lung. I mean, you need more air, so it should be higher. So is it... Okay, so it's either these... What? Okay, so it's either B or C. And then, do you want to increase or decrease? I'm pretty sure when you run, like, you increase your pressure so that it helps, like, push the blood through. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but I'm pretty sure... It, that you get more tense as you run more, so I'm gonna go with C. 31. Costa Rican vampire bat is often not able to acquire blood from a mammal on a given night. Wilkinson, okay, what? Dude, why does it give so much unnecessary? Okay. So, based on this knowledge, with the following is essential to confirm the occurrence of reciprocal altruism. So, basically, reciprocal altruism means that if someone does something good for you, you'll do something back, regardless of whether you're kin. Because that's like separate things. That's like. If you save your kin, you're passing on your own genes because your kin can have your own genes, right? But this is different. This is like, if you help someone, you expect them to help you back, and that's why you help them in the first place. So it should just be like 4, or 3 and 4, honestly. Or no, no, no. That would, yeah, it should be just 3 and 4 then. Or no, 2 and 4. Because they would, if, if it was reciprocal altruism, why would they give it a week back? Yeah, so it should just be 2 and 4, because if they're giving it a different kin, then we know it's not just because, like, they want to help their kin. So, should it be 2 and 4, D. Okay, the coconut relatedness between an uncle and a nephew. Okay, so basically, you have your dad and your uncle, so this is your... Nope, we got to use proper pedigree notation. This is your dad, this is your uncle, and then this is your mom, and then you are here. So, uncle and nephew, so there's one half relatedness between these two dudes, and then you're one half related with your dad, so you're basically one fourth related to your uncle. No, sorry, you're well, yeah, you're one half related to your dad, so that means you multiply by one half to get your uncle. So it should be just one fourth B. Thirty two B. Thirty three. How are we doing on time? Oh, we haven't even used half the time. Let's go. Thirty three. What is the following is okay, so maternally inherited sex link trait. Son of a non care non normal a normal non carrier mother will not be affected. So basically, hemophilia is X-linked. Wait, really? I thought it was just autosomal recess. Oh, I forgot how. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I guess it's sex-linked. So it should be X. And A is true. Okay, so B. Daughter of the same parents will be a heterozygous carrier. Yes, because the dad would give her the X-links. Her mom would not. Okay, and then males will... Can, yes. D. If a female has a hemophilic gene on one of her chromosomes, she will so no... She will not... Yes, that's true. Son will be protected, no, because the par the mom might have the disease, be a carrier, and the dad might be completely fine, but the mom might give him the bad X, and then the dad would give him the Y, so that's not right. So E, 34. What is the probability of obtaining the given genotype in the offspring A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D? That was not useful at all, because they're all, okay, well, you know, you know what? It's fine. Okay, let's do the proper notation. Big A, little A, big B, little B, big C, little D, okay, and then the same thing for the other. No, what? Oh, so two big A's, and then rest is same. So you basically do it letter by letter, right? So you basically cross AA and AA, and you want to get AA. So, all right, so basically there's a one probability to, so basically to get capital A, capital A, you got to get a big A from both parents. So there's a one half you get it from this parent, and one you get from that, so one half total. Then for the next one, you want to get little b, little b from heterozygous parents, so that's one fourth, and then... Same for the next one, same for the last one, and we basically get that it is 1 over 128. 
which is exactly B. There are n plus 1 alleles at a particular locus on an autosome. The frequency of the allele is 1 half, and the frequency of the other alleles are 1 over 2n. Uh, under the assumption of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, what is the total frequency of heterozygotes? Okay. So basically, the frequency of heterozygotes is just, like, 2 times the pairwise multiplication. So 1 half times 1 over 2n plus 1 half times 1 over 2n. And then this happens like for all the other alleles and then the other alleles multiply by each other. So it would be 1 over 2n times 1 over 2n plus dot dot dot. And how many times does that happen? So basically you have n alleles. So, time, so this happens n choose 2 times. So this happens n times and then this happens n choose 2 times. So you basically have n times n actually let's do it a different way so so basically there's n squared ways you could pair uh one allele with another one no but you don't want to pair with itself right yeah so there's n times n minus one ways to do it and then over 2n times 2n and then you had to add um and then you have to add the number 2n over over 2n here and then over 2 times 2n this is basically what we did on the other one, but I'm just making it simpler here. And then basically we just simplify this and we get n squared minus n plus 2n squared over 4n squared. And then this is basically just going to be 3n minus 1. Yeah, so this is going to be C. Oh, oh, that's so, oh, I'm so bad. You could literally have just done like... Uh, we could have just done how many homozygotes there are and then just subtract. But whatever, we're bad at the game, so we're just going to do it this way. So, C. 36. Natural selection is effective in the evolutionary processes because it A. Causes evolution. Sure. B. Changes allele. Okay, so allele frequencies is basically the definition of evolution, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be B. I think A is too vague. Oh. No, so natural selection doesn't by itself change allele frequencies. What it does is it increases the mean fitness of a population, and in that, and then by doing that, it changes the frequency. So it should just be E. 37. What is following is most likely to be close to a hardy weinberg in equilibrium. Human population in Toronto, Canada, no, because it's too small. There are not that many people, and it's not like completely random mating. Population of 100 flies, where the little... Okay, so that looks pretty good, because it's a pretty big pop... Oh, that's not even big compared to the next one. Okay. Uh, one million now, that's big, and there's little, oh, but there's a lot of population nearby, so that's not good, because then they could move between them, so no. D, that, no, that doesn't work, and then E looks good, because it's massive, there's no, like, moving between colonies, and there's little environmental fluctuations, so we're going to go with E. 38. Darwin's finches are okay, which, okay, so genetic variability that can be found, no. Evolutionary Positive by which different forms adapt. Okay, so that's probably B. 39. Well, that doesn't make sure. So that's not right. D. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so 39. The species of insect was found to have resistance to. Okay, so a stabilizing selection probably caused the development of the resistance. In the, okay, so it's probably directional. I'm assuming. Wait, yeah, so original gene pool did. And then, yeah, the insecticide probably didn't cause the mutation, but the original gene pool create, like had resistance, and then those ones survived. So. It's probably going to be B. 40. Come on, we're almost done. This is just called succession. This is like just a thing you got to know. 41. What would you what would you expect to happen if it lacked restriction enzymes? Bacteria? Yes, because basically that's what CRISPR-Cas9 is. It uses restriction enzymes to cut up the DNA and then it takes that DNA and uses it to kill future one. So that's not going to be right. So it's just A. 42. Replacement of a lysine with the glycine. Okay, so... Lysine and glycine are completely different because lysine is like basic, but glycine is hydrophobic. So that would change everything. And it's not a loss of a negatively charged side chain because it's positive. So I guess it's just D. But that's kind of troll. They expect you to memorize the structure of amino acids or at least like what charge they have or like hydrophobic, hydrophilic. You got to know that. Unfortunate. It's kind of bad, but whatever. And then bio biodiversity is just a memorization thing. It's like... If you read the Campbell book, it literally says species richness and relative abundance. So E. 44. Uh, so this is just knowing stuff. I guess. I guess that's everything. But okay, so taiga is a thing. Tundra is also a thing though. But taiga is basically forest. So that should be fine. Not estuary. Uh, so not E. 
Perhaps D, but D, Savannah, and Grass are basically the same. Oh yeah, we need Desert, so C, no. Cause, yeah, so B. Cause, it has a bunch of repeats, that's so dumb. Okay, whatever, it's B. 45. Which two climactic, major climactic factors dictate what kind of vegetation is found on the landscape? So it's basically temperature and precipitation is literally exactly in the textbook like that. So yeah, I just take that. 45B. 46. So all the maple trees. So basically it's within one species. So community is like a bunch of different species, a bunch of different populations together and populations of a single species. So it's just going to be A. Noise. 47. We're almost there. Come on, we got this. We're gonna roast this time. Long term survival uh, is usually just light. I'm pretty sure it's just light. Cause I remember watching this documentary and then they're all the plants trying to get to the light and they're like, hey, if you get to the light, you survive. If you don't, you die. So, yep, we're gonna go with D48. So, one and. Wait, what? So, we want one and four. So, pollen and seeds. So, ferns do not have seeds. D. So D has both pollen and seeds. Two more! Come on! Let's do it! It's classified. Okay, so what additional things? So hair over parts of the body, that would support it. I, I'm pretty sure reptiles have this too, so that's not a problem. Separate, yeah, that's true, because reptiles don't have a completely separated heart. Do they? Don't think so. Diaphragm separating thoracic. I think they might. Mm. Okay, I don't know about that. Diaphragm. Bro, this is hard. Okay, five is probably good. And we do not have enucleated blood cells, so that's not right. So at least one and five. One, four, and five? I'm chill with that. Yeah, I'm chill with one, four, and five. Let's go with B. I have no idea whether it's right, but we could check. And then 50, last one, valid taxonomic group, which basically means it includes like a common ancestor and it's like descendants. So tamarind and squirrel, no, because then you have to include all the other ones. Tamarind, squirrel, or howler. No, then you had to include marmoset. Squirrel, howler, woolly. No, then you had to include everything else. Then wooler, woolly, fighter, howler. So this works because you could just take this part and then there's a common answer here and that's good. So D. All right, let's check our answers. How long did we take? Epic, 30. So we had 15 minutes left. That's not amazing, but it's okay. Hey, stop. 34, 19, epic. And let's see what we got. That Now that's a real question, okay? We could have done it as fast as we want, but we need to get it right. Okay, that's not even bad. Let's count how many we got wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, then we got nine wrong. Epic. Let's go through it and see what we did. So the first one we got wrong is number three. So, bruh, did I say E? Is it not? Oh, it was two and three. So I guess it didn't count that as a polymer. Sure. Okay. Fifteen. Bro, how did I get 16? Oh, I didn't get 16 right, okay. Uh, anyway, so 15, is it just A? Does it literally say A? If it says A, I'm good. Okay, no, it's not. Wait, what? 15? Really? Okay, did not know that. 16, I had no idea how to do that. That's probably just a memorization from Ravens, but whatever. 19. So is it just inducers then? Okay, sure. I mean, that's so badly. Like, it technically is negative feedback, right? Because you're starving, it secretes hormone to make you not starve. What? Okay, sure. 25. So I said 2 and 3, right? I know 1 and 2. 25A, is that what I said? Yeah. Well, 3 is for sure, right? So is it just D? 25B? I mean, yeah, E. Wait, what? All are incorrect? How is adipose tissue. Adipose is. What? Okay, this is officially incorrect. Okay, come on. It literally says it's a connective tissue that spurs fat. What else do you want? What? Bruh. Alrighty. So that's just wrong, and then what else did we get? 26. Is it D? It better not be D. Come on. Oh, it's D. Bruh. Okay, sure. Sure, sure. 29. Uh, I had no idea to do this. What's the answer? 29. C. 1 and 3. So I guess bluefin tuna are the ones that are endothermic. I guess it's because they live in, like, colder water? I have no idea. 30 I also got wrong. What is it? Is it, is it B? A, so it decreases? Okay, yeah, I was pretty sure that it increases intra-abdominal pressure, but why is the interpulmonary pressure? May oh, maybe it's because your heart is working less strongly, maybe? Yeah, probably. Oh, bro, I didn't, literally didn't miss any. Oh, I missed 49. That's pretty good. Happy with that. Okay, I had no idea. So, 
like the other one that I was thinking is the last one. Cause I guess this is not necessarily a mammal thing because birds have regulation, I guess. So I guess we'll just go with that last. So I guess it will be E49. E, yeah, I guess that makes sense. But why did that have, oh, E nucleated means not nu Biggest brain, bro. <laughs> I'm so smart. I thought E nucleated means it has a nucleus. Okay, that's good. All right, 51, 34 minutes, not bad at all. Hope you guys enjoyed that. You guys are asking for more Yusubo videos. And if you guys want a specific type of Yusubo video, because Yusubo is like a really big topic, and I don't know whether you guys want me to do walkthroughs or whether you guys want me to do a tutorial, just let me know. I will do it. All right, thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.